So let's first begin with the most popular plug-and-play controller currently available on Amazon from Domestic Automation. This was built and designed for 5 volt strips, so if you have something like the WS2812B, SK6812, or 5 volt WS2811 lights, it's as simple as plugging in your 5 volt power supply and then connecting your LEDs and you're already done. But for 12 or 24 volt pixels, the process is slightly different. I'll start out with some 12 volt WS2815 lights, and the first thing I'm going to do is cut off the JST connector. Then I'll go ahead and strip back all four of the wires. Next, since these wires are pretty short, in order to make things a little bit easier to follow, I'm going to connect four separate wagos to each of the four wires we just stripped. Moving on, I'll prepare some 18 gauge silicone wires to connect, which will serve the purpose of making our lead wires on the strip a little bit longer. And even though the color of the wires makes no difference, as long as they're going to the correct spot, I will be matching everything so you're not left trying to figure out which is which. Once they're stripped, we can then connect them to the corresponding wagos. Now that we have that set up, let's move it aside and turn our attention to the controller. I'm going to be using their lever clamping system right here and taking another white wire that I've stripped and inserting it into the negative terminal. I'll then be doing the same thing, but this time with the green wire into the opening on the right labeled GPIO4. Once that's done, I'll set everything down and connect a 3-slot wago to the end of that same green wire. Now for power, you're going to need a 12 volt supply, which might look similar to this. And if it does, you can easily cut off the barrel plug and strip back the wires to look like this. Or you can also buy power bricks that already come with the exposed wires like I have here and what I'll be using for this example. First, I'm going to take two 5-slot wagos and connect one to the black negative and one to the red positive. Then I'll connect the white ground wire from the controller and the white ground from the LED strip to the 5-slot wago that already has our black negative wire. Next, take the red voltage wire from the LED strip and put that in the other 5-slot wago that has the red voltage wire from our power supply. And finally, take the green and blue data cables from the LED strip and connect them to the 3-slot wago coming from the controller's green data line. Then, to provide power to the controller itself, I'll use a little 5 volt 2 amp plug. So hopefully that doesn't seem too complex, but one other thing to mention is that if you're doing a larger install that calls for power injection, you can tap into the main supply right here and run those wires to wherever you might need them along the strip. And if you're curious, I generally always keep my brightness limiter turned on and set to 4000 milliamps as long as my power supply is at least 5 amps. And for WLED settings, the lights are set to WS281X, the strip has 300 individually addressable pixels, the color order is set to GRB, and we are connected to the GPIO 4 pin. Now let's quickly remove the WS2815 strips and replace it with some 12 volt cob lights. I've already cut off the JST connector on these and stripped back the wires, so it's as simple as inserting them into the corresponding wagos. And like always, make sure the arrows on the strip are going away from the controller. And since these are also 12 volts, we can keep the same power supply that we used for the previous setup. Go ahead and plug things in, and just like that, you're all set. Now for this, the only difference in WLED settings is that the color order is set to RGB, and these lights are controlled in groups, so the 5 meter strip has a total of 100 zones, which is what I need to put in for the length. Now before moving on, I want to thank the sponsor of today's video, Aura. So this is me signing up for their free 14 day trial, and during the setup process, one of the many things they do is scan the internet for data brokers that have your personal information. These data brokers then make a fortune selling your information to spammers, scammers, and other entities that want to know more about you. Now Aura was able to find 30 such instances of my personal information being in the hands of these companies. Then with one click, Aura sends out a notice to have my information removed from their systems, which they are legally required to do when asked. Their all-in-one platform offers antivirus protection, credit monitoring, credit lock, financial transaction alerts, secure VPN, identity protection, parental controls, 24-7 US-based customer service, and much, much more. I'll leave a link in the description for you to start your own free 14-day trial, so please make sure to check them out. Thank you all so much, and now back to the video. Alright, so let's remove these and replace it with some 24-volt Cobb LEDs. Now on these, to switch things up, instead of cutting off the JST piece, I'll use the extra JST connector that the lights come with, attach it, and then strip back those wires. Now for power, since these are 24 volt strips, I need to remove the 12 volt supply that we've been using. I bought this 24 volt 5 amp unit that has a barrel connector at the end. I'll go ahead and cut off the plug, strip back the outer layer, and then strip back the inner red and black wires. After that's done, I can get those connected to our 5 slot wagos and get everything else reattached just like in the last example. So that's just a quick breakdown of how easy it is to get some 12 or 24 volt addressable strips up and running using this controller. And again, make sure to watch the full video I already did on this product that goes into a lot more details on the WLED side of things as well as the setup for 5 volt strips instead. 
Moving on, I'm going to remove the lights, the controller, and swap the 24 volt supply back to our 12 volt unit. Now for these next examples, I'll be using a plain ESP32 device that has WLED installed. And if you don't know how to do that, I'll leave a link to a video I made in the description going over those easy steps. So the first thing I'll be doing is taking a jumper wire and connecting it to the GND pin on the module like I'm doing now. Then I'll take another wire, and you could use a lot of different pins for the data, but I'll go ahead and connect things to the D2 pin and add our 3-slot WAGO. Next, I'll bring back the 12 volt WS2815 strips and get everything reconnected in the exact same way we did with the other controller. And as for powering the ESP32, I'll just use a standard micro USB plug. Once complete, turn everything on and you're good to go. Now for this, color order is back to GRB, length goes back to 300, and since I used the D2 data pin, I put 2 in the GPIO field. Let's now replace these lights with the 12 volt cob strips, and once I had everything connected and powered up, I got some really bad flickering. This usually means a couple things. One is that there might not be enough power, there could be a bad ground connection, or it's something tied in with the data signal. Now the controller from Domestic Automation has something called a logic level shifter that boosts the data line, and if you remember, these lights did work perfectly with that. But when you're using an ESP32 like I'm doing here, there isn't anything to boost the data. This is generally not an issue when the strip is somewhat close to the module like it is now, and considering our WS2815 lights worked perfectly, my assumption is that there must be something slightly different about these cob strips that aren't playing nice with the data signal. Now instead of trying to connect a logic level shifter, which does complicate the install a decent amount, whenever I have flickering, I'll always just try to use a simple resistor like I have here to see if that'll fix the issue first. And as you can see, with the resistor installed on the data line, our lights are no longer flickering. Now let's swap these out for our 24 volt cob strips as well as replacing the 12 volt power supply with our 24 volt unit, and everything was the exact same where I again needed the resistor. I'll play a little bit more footage of things without and with the resistor so you can see the difference it's making. So I know I was getting a lot of questions about 12 and 24 volt setups, so I hope this video will serve as a beginner's guide for a few of the many different ways and options you could go about getting things up and running. I'll leave links in the description to everything I use, plus I'll have things broken up into 12 volt and 24 volt categories. So that about does it for this one, but I'll leave you with me quickly getting 15 meters, which is 900 LEDs of the WS2815 lights up and running with power injection using the domestic automation board. Thank you all for watching, and I hope you have a blessed day.